Welcome to Kids Town. I am Baker Becky. I am the Children's Ministry Director at Covenant Community Church in Vacaville, California. And I'm Sue Chef Joey. All right. Did, did you guys know that Covenant Community Church has purchased a really cool resource for everyone? It's called Right Now Media. And if you haven't joined yet, follow the instructions you see here. And each week you can log on and watch Phil Vischer's What's in the Bible video and many other selections too. Now it's time to get started with today's adventure. We made it through the entire Pentateuch and we sure learned a lot. That's right. The Pentateuch is the first five books of the Bible. Can you name them? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Read a little every day before you slumber. Cap it all off with a trip through Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Very good. So yes, that's the Pentateuch. Five books that tell a story of the whole world. How God created the universe. How he created Adam and Eve and how they fell how they broke their relationship with God and broke God's creation by ignoring him, by going their own way. That's a little thing called sin. Right, and sin means we can no longer be with God. Sin brought death to our relationships and to God's creation. But God has a rescue plan, a plan to save us from sin and death. The Pentateuch tells the story of God launching his rescue plan by promising this guy named Abraham that his kids will become God's nation and get their own land. A holy land for a holy people. And holy means set apart for God. Right. Holy doesn't mean better than. It means different than. Oh. Set apart for God. So, by the end of the Pentateuch, God has saved Abraham's descendants, the children of Israel, from slavery in Egypt. He has given them lots and lots of rules on how to be set apart, how to be holy. And he has brought them to the very edge of the promised land. Where they get stuck for 40 years. And that's it the end of the Pentateuch. So, what's next? What comes after the Pentateuch? Well, it's time for the next big section of the Bible. It's called the historical books. Why do you think they're called the historical books? They're called hysterical books because everyone is running around and screaming hysterically like this. Ah! Ah! Uh, they are not hysterical books, they are historical books. Oh, why? Because these 12 books cover nearly 1,000 years of history of God's physical kingdom, Israel. Which books are they? Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, can I borrow your hand? Nehemiah, this, 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 just this one, <laughs> Nehemiah and Esther. That's 12. Whoa. So, these dozen books cover the history of Israel, God's kingdom on earth? Yes, from around 14,000 B.C. all the way to 433 B.C., almost a thousand years. Hmm, amazing. So, what's the first one again? The first of the historical books is the book Joshua. Okay, so what do we know about it? Well, so God's rescue plan started in the Pentateuch with three promises given to Abraham. Number one, God said that he would make Abraham's descendants a great nation. Descendants means kids and grandkids and so on. So, number two, he would give those kids their own land. And finally, number three, the whole world would be blessed through these kids. And by the end of the Pentateuch, Abraham's descendants have become a great nation. But they still aren't in the land that God has promised them. 
Canaan. So when do they get their own land? When does the promise come true? So that's what the next book of the Bible is all about. That's Joshua. And when did they bless the whole world? The final promise. Well, that's the whole rest of the Bible. Whoa. How God worked through Israel to bring about a blessing for the whole world. His ultimate rescue plan. Huh. That's very interesting. All right, on with the show. Okay, here we go. So, Joshua is a medium-sized book with 24 chapters that divide okay. into four parts. And part one is about Joshua finally leading the Israelites across the Jordan River and into Canaan, the promised land. And once again, God parts the water so they can walk across on dry land. With the fish is staring at them? Not this time. So the book of Joshua says that the waters of the Jordan was blocked about 20 miles upstream from the Israelites. So for sure, no fish could watch them cross. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, and then we'll get to the rest of Joshua next time. So I imagine that the people of Israel were worried and that they had many different fears. They probably needed lots of encouragement from God, just, just like we do today. So the craft today I found on a website called Kids Bible Teacher. And I have the instructions and the printables linked in the comments of this video post. So I'm gonna walk you through making this paper globe. All you need are the two pages from the printable and then you need scissors and glue. I printed mine on scrapbook paper and then you're gonna cut out all of your circles. Okay, so after you've cut out all the circles, I want you to notice that each circle has a different verse from the Bible to help, you rem help remind you of God's promises. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold on these lines here. So we're gonna fold each circle into a triangle and you're gonna fold on the lines in inward. Okay, so now that you've cut out your circles and you've folded them all into triangles, you're going to glue 10 of these into a row and you're going to go alternating point side up and point side down. So we're going to start putting them together like this. We're going to glue all five points are going to come together in the center. But once you have your five triangles glued together and they're dry here and these five here, you're going to put them together in a circle. So you're going to attach these pieces here together. ends of this together to make a ring like this. Okay, and then we're going to let these dry. Okay, and our final step, we are going to glue one circle to the ring. We're going to match up the five flaps, and then we're going to flip it over, and we're going to glue the other circle to the other side of the ring. So that's it. Your verse ball is done. And now you can use this as a decoration. You can store it on your nightstand to remind yourself of God's promises when your heart is fearful or play with it like a ball. Would you like to All close right. us in prayer? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for never giving up on us. Thank you for loving us just the way we are, even when we mess up. Thank you, God, for your ultimate rescue plan. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll see you next time. 
and we're going to learn the rest of what happens in the book of Joshua. Ooh, all yeah. right. Bye. Bye.